Okay, let's see the bidding eighteen thousand dollars. Let's just get, take this another case study here uh, again. Uh, I'm at the auction. I'm trying to help people to uh, make the right decision. And uh, basically, if uh, you're bidding in the auction or uh, anybody that you know bidding in the auction, uh, make sure that you do your title search. And that's what I'm trying to show you right now is how to do title searches. So again, let's take this case study today. Only HOA foreclosures are coming and, uh, and HOA foreclosures have their own position in the title. When you buy an HOA foreclosure, uh, you must make sure that uh, what other liens exist against the property and who are the parties of interest uh, that are owed or have a claim against your property. And the way I conduct that search is I'm going to do that again from scratch so I can show you. The first thing I do is I will check the property at the property appraisal. That's going to give me more information about uh, when it was bought, when it was sold, you see, 2010, uh, they bought it for 120, and this is a two two and a half, and I can see the assessed value here uh, by the county is 183, and it's selling for about 220. So right now we're gonna take a, a we're gonna take that value for that case study for 220. We did a case study before, and. Uh, that's my previous uh, uh, example. And we're going to take another case study here. We call it case study one. And we call this case study two. And over here, we're going to say value is 220. And now we're gonna look at the underlying issues of that property. So they're still bidding for $21,000. We wanna understand, again, when you're bidding at the HOA, you're bidding at the auction, you are buying properties, and your ultimate goal is to get a free and clear title eventually and have equity in that property, okay? I'm just making it simple, meaning that whatever you're gonna buy right now and whatever is owed on that property that you don't see if you pay both of those things, your property is still cheaper than the market. And that's the ultimate goal when you're buying properties at the auction, is to buy cheaper than the market, is to buy properties with equity. So you can do what you want to do afterwards. If, it is, if it's renting it or if it's flipping it, uh, you still have the option and your risk is very, very, very minimized. So that property appraisal website gives me the information of when this property was bought. And I'm gonna look for the chain of title since that day for uh, from uh, 2010 and my ultimate goal is to actually see how much is hold against that property if i click here for example i can also see the parties that are involved in that foreclosure the plaintiff it tells you that the association is the plaintiff as you can see university lending property homeowner association they are the one that foreclosing and here you can see the case number and here you can see how much is hold to them and they're also referencing the property and people are bidding already for $23,000. And we want to understand why, why and what they're bidding on. And what is good number and what is a bad number to bid on in that aspect. So I'm just going to take the name of the defendant, the owner of the house. And what I'm going to do is, uh, is basically go to the public recording department, which I showed you before. That's another website that uh, all of the deeds, mortgages, foreclosures, probates, divorces, whatever leads you want to call them as leads, okay? I call them a piece of information, a story, depends what you do with them, uh, in this website or in your county's recording website, okay? Deeds must be recorded, foreclosures must be recorded, divorces must be recorded. All of this information must be recorded and your job is to understand the data, understand where to find the data and how to turn it into profit. And that's what I'm trying to show in off-market uh, investments, in off-market property investment, is how to conduct title searches and uh, get equity when you buy the auction. So I'm going to do a search here, back to that case study here. People, again, people are bidding. It's already $25,000. And uh, we're checking the property, the property appraisal. We can also see it's a photograph if you want, right? I don't even look at that because I just want to get cheap properties that no matter what, I can make money. And 
uh, basically it showed me when the property was bought 2010 and I need to run my title search my chain of title search since 2010 I actually bought it in May 28 of 2010 so if I even if I want I can do I can change it to May so I don't even get confused with the results that I'm gonna get so right now I got about 18 results uh, and we're gonna look at those results as you can see here this is where the deed was recorded this is the 120 and our job right now is to search all of these documents up to the chain of title and to see what are the liens, mortgages, violations, and anything else that might cost you money if you become the owner of this property, basically. So if you, that's, that's the ultimate goal right now. The ultimate goal right now is to check, okay, how much is owed against that property and what should be your bid uh, and now we're going to do it uh, and we're going to understand what's going on. So property was bought for 120. Following that, you can see a mortgage here. If I click on that, you can see there was a mortgage recorded following. So you know there is a mortgage that was recorded immediately after the person bought the property. If you can, uh, you can even verify and look at the mortgage. I'm just going to make it bigger here on my screen. Uh, you can even verify and look at the mortgage. And... Um, basically uh, reference the property address if you want to make sure that's the right address that's the right mortgage okay as you can see here university lending that's the same uh, property 6316 lending tamarack that's the same property that the mortgage we're looking right now it's got a lot of extensions and I'm looking for the last extension of that document and you see list pendants was filed. The meaning that was a, a, there is a foreclosure going on against that property. That's exactly what it means. And that's exactly what I showed you in my previous search when I got like 100 searches and I didn't want to go through all these searches. The first thing I normally do when I buy an HOA foreclosure is I actually look for the list pendants. That saves me a lot of time because that tells me which parties are already litigating against that property. You can see two parties are litigating against this property right now in 2019. And this is University Lending and the U.S. Bank. Uh, and U.S. Bank right now has a pending foreclosure against them. So already for this property, I wouldn't buy it because there is... Uh, a pending foreclosure against that property. If that property is worth $220,000, yes, and there is a pending foreclosure against that property, the pending foreclosure amount should be very, very uh, minimal so I can have equity, right? If, if they are foreclosing for $200,000 and right now you are paying $30,000 in the auction it's going on right now, you're already overpaying for a property that you shouldn't be overpaying for. And that's the, that's one of the things you must check before you buy an HOA foreclosure. Number one, number one, if there is a lease pendants file against that property, if there is a notice of default, if the bank started their foreclosure, that's what I'm trying to say. Because if they have a mortgage, you want to know, not just if they have a mortgage, it's also if the bank took an action and they're starting to foreclose. In this case here, in $29,000, they're still bidding. There is a pending lawsuit by the bank that we just looked at, US Bank. And we want to know how much is owed to them. So I'm, again, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna check that case number and I'm gonna go to the docket. The docket is another website that gives me access to basically look at what happened at the case uh, in terms of the attorneys, uh, motions, and the party that is foreclosing, who are they foreclosing? You can see US Bank is foreclosing university lending here and the defendant and the owner, both of them. And this case has been going on since uh, July. So right now, somebody is buying a property that there is a pending foreclosure going on, meaning that their position is university lending homeowner association that they are buying over here. The plaintiff here, as you can see, is University Lending uh, Property Owner Association. So when you're buying this position, you're stepping into the uh, shoes of the association and that's basically you know, uh, uh, the position, the priority, the lead, the lead priority that you bought basically is the HOA. But the bank is much stronger than everybody else here. The first bank named the owner and they also named the homeowner association. So let's say, let's take an example. Let's say somebody buy this property for $30,000 right here, right? And he's going and he's paying that money tomorrow. 
within 12 days, he's gonna get a deed. He's gonna get title for that property, okay? He's gonna be the legal owner of that property. But at the same time, at the same time, the bank already started a foreclosure six or seven months ago. They already started a foreclosure and they already named the HOA. The HOA is due to be eliminated from their position just because the bank named them. If you're gonna buy the property right now at this point, you're stepping into the foot uh, of the association. So once the bank uh, finished foreclosing, whoever bought that property, their deed is gonna overcome on the other person deed and they're gonna eliminate the interest completely. Meaning that they are buying, they would be buying thin hair if they will not pay whatever is owed to the mortgage. Right now, after you buy this property, you cannot do anything with that case, with that lease pendants case that is still going on with the, with the mortgage. If you bought it before the mortgage filed the foreclosure, then they would have to put you in the lawsuit and maybe you can hire a foreclosure defense attorney and stall that case and rent that property and try to keep it for three or four or five years like I do while fighting the bank, but, but renting it, making it instead of a uh, liability, making it an asset. And the only asset that property can right now be is if only if there is equity. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into that complaint here. As I said, you can see all the motions that are filed uh, in this foreclosure. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside the complaint and I'm gonna see how much money is owed to the bank. That's gonna be very, very important piece of information for me. And that's gonna tell me exactly if the, that bidder who is bidding right now, let me see if he's still bidding, $33,000, this is crazy. If that property is even worth it, that's what he's gonna tell me. And let's see, maybe he's smart, maybe he looked at the complaint, maybe he knows how much money is owed, uh, but maybe he doesn't. Here we go, we are having a huge issue, my friends. Huge issues here, look at that. Unpaid principal balance of $175,000 is due on the note and mortgage together with interest from November 01, 2018. So over one year, maybe 13 or 14 or 15 months ago, okay, the person stopped paying. He, at that time, he owed 175. So he owed 175 at that time but he didn't pay for another uh, 13 or 14 months, okay? So take that into consideration. Take the 175, right? And now I had all the attorney fees and all the things that are gonna happen to the judgment, the taxes and everything, and they're gonna come up with a judgment of at least 220 here. I'm telling you because I, I know it, I've followed banks, I've seen how they file their judgment, I've seen how they add up their fees, I've seen how they add up their attorney fees, I've seen how they do it, and um, they are investors, and they are coming to actually eliminate somebody $35,000 in a couple of months when they conclude this foreclosure here. They're gonna el eliminate that person because that person who is buying in today, he will never be able to come up and pay the bank. Even if it was $175,000, it's not for buying this deal, okay? He's already paying $35,000. This is insane. I should call this guy and I should tell him, hey, you are gonna lose $35,000. How much my advice could be worth to you? You see, if you're not doing a title search and you are already bidding $35,000, you're paying 5% immediately from that sale when it finishes, okay? So 5% is already gone. So it's already over $1,000, it could be. And all you needed to do is just to call me. It's just to send me an email and say, hey, is that a good deal? Can you spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes and tell me if I should spend 35 fucking thousand dollars? Why people don't do that? They just go to the auction and say, oh, I can buy a house for $35,000, but it's worth $200,000. Oh, but you know what? I forgot there is a mortgage, 175. Wow. wow, when it's too good to be true, guess what? Guess what? I'm sitting right here. I'm not bidding. I'm laughing. I'm joking at you. If I'm joking at you and you're over there behind your screen getting so excited because you're buying a property for the past 10 or 15 minutes bidding on the same property, not understanding that there is a title issue already, saying, stop, I'm not bidding anymore, then you have a serious problem. And that's a serious problem we have right now with investors and bidders who just uh, go and bid not knowing what they're buying. And me coming up as a 
somebody who's trying to save the day, calling up people and telling him, hey, I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm looking at the auction, I think you made a mistake, go call your attorney, and then I call, I get a call the day after, hey, thank you so much, I can't believe you did it for me, I appreciate it, where can I meet you, and all that stuff, but you should have taken that into consideration, what are you thinking to yourself, I just gonna buy a property for $36,000, it's worth $200,000, really? And everybody is gonna sit quiet while you get a million, while you are becoming a millionaire buying properties on the internet? Is that how your brain works? That you can overcome your competition just by understanding how much it's worth and not looking for Titan? This is not how you're gonna become a millionaire. Let me tell you, becoming a millionaire, you have to have knowledge. You have to have a particular knowledge and you have to know what you're doing. And if you don't have that knowledge, you better hire somebody who has that knowledge because you're gonna lose so much money thinking you can do it all yourself. That's the bigger mistakes everybody can do, uh, thinking they know something others don't and just keep it from themselves. And that thing that they know is actually uh, a force that actually bring them down. And if they share it with somebody, they might just like straighten their head. But people are uh, just thinking they found a, a, a way to do things sometimes and uh, making a lot of mistakes at the auction, this is a huge mistake. Uh, that's gonna cost thirty-seven thousand dollar to somebody. Uh, there is a mortgage on that property. We checked that property. There is a mortgage. It's already in the going. Uh, they are suing for it. Whoever is buying this property is gonna lose thirty-seven thousand dollars today. That is the case study we are working on right now. I'm going to repeat that case study with you again. Okay. That property is going to the auction. HOA is foreclosing. They are owed $5,000. This is the property in question. When we, looked, when we look at the property appraisal, we found out that this property is worth about $220,000. And that's what we evaluated it for $220,000. If you don't believe me, you can just go to the maps really quickly and I can show you that we're looking at $220,000 without going into very uh, complicated comps. So if I do search for 2019, I would see that 230, 220, 224, 220, the cheapest was 220. So I'm taking a 220 as a comp, okay? I'm not over-exaggerating, I'm being honest, I'm being uh, uh, reasonable. So I took it into a 220 uh, value here, okay? That's the case study number two, and we're gonna continue that. Uh, whoever is going to buy this property is going to pay at least $40,000 here, right? It's going to $38,000 even. Uh, we don't even know what the price they're paying on yet. Okay, let's call it $40,000 because it's still going. You have another 175k mortgage, right? Here is the mortgage. I'm not lying to anybody. Here it is. It's outstanding. Uh, and they're telling you how much is owed. It's 175. If you can't see that, I make the screen much bigger. And you can see it's 175. They defaulted in November 01, 2018. And since then, there was a lot of money accumulated in addition to that 175. But I'm just trying to be conservative in this video. And I'm just gonna show you an obvious mistake, right? I really don't have to be sharp on the numbers here. I can show you an obvious mistake here. So if that property, if you have to come up with 175 to satisfy the mortgage and you're already paying $40,000 right here, right? So, Basically, you're buying this property for, very simple, 215, I guess. Yeah, you're buying this property for 175 plus 40. Oops. 175 plus 40. Just to make it clear, make it nice in the video. 215. Where is the repairs? Renovations. Okay, where is the clerk fees for the sale? Realtor fees. Simply under water. This cell is simply under water. Whoever is buying this property is making a huge mistake today uh, that could cost $40,000. Why am I doing these videos? Why am I spending my time here and trying to tell people 
to be very, very, very uh, focused on title search is because it hurts to see other people lose money for me right now. That losses, you can look at them and say, okay, those bidders, they are killing the sales anyway. You know, I don't have business because of them. Look what the hell they are doing. Bidding $41,000 on a property that is going to get foreclosed in a couple of months. Am I stupid to let that guy not get burned because he's killing my sales all the time? No. You can look at it two ways. You can either come and bring up your value. When I say you bring up your value to be successful, it doesn't only mean that you bring up to value to create revenue, to create sales, to sell yourself. I'm not saying come and sell yourself because you know better. Okay, I'm coming, I'm, I'm saying come and show your value. Okay, what I do is, I do tell people to stay away and I try to help them save money and I am showing my value and this is where it ends. That person 100% is gonna save money if he listens to me, he's gonna save $40,000. Whether he sees me as a, somebody who has value who somebody he should be associated with, it's up to him. It's up to how much he wants to give back to the universe. In reality, according to my experience, many people and most people, I would even say 95% of people, are takers. They are motivated by taking, they're motivated, they're, they're, their pure intention is what can they get for themselves, okay? It's what can benefit. They always have an interest in something. They are takers. They want to find somebody who has less knowledge, less experience, and maybe exploit that person, maybe just use it, use them. And that's the reality in life. But here is another reality. 5% of those people are givers. When you find a person that recognize you as a giver and who or she themselves are givers, this is where you can have the best connection you can ever imagine in your life. And I give you an example, okay? Let's say I help that person to save $40,000. And I just said, hey, listen, you know what? I'm an expert. I bought $50 million worth of properties. I can save you $40,000. You only have to do, uh, you only have to go and check what I found out with your attorney. Have a nice day. That's it. I, I'm giving somebody the opportunity to change their mind and save, and listen to me, and save $44,400. Right now it's been in the $44,400. If, if they're willing to change their mind, if they're going to listen, and they're going to validate what I say with their attorney, and they're going to take action, and the next day they're going to have that relief of fuck, if I bought that property, I would burn all my savings. I would even lose my credibility on my investors or I would lose my whatever. I just feel bad about it. But now, this person can be anybody. It can be a person who owns 100 properties. It can be a person who has millions of dollars. Once you gain their trust, once you showed you have value to give to these people, they're going to come back at you and they're going to give you tens of tens of times more. Especially if you find a giver and a giver because a giver can never be owed. Right? If you give me something, I can't, I can't really accept that. I can't really, you know, I don't feel well with that if I'm a giver. You know, I have to give you back to feel good with myself. So I don't feel owed to you anything. And that's how it's going to be with investors. When you come up and you save the day to somebody and you say, hey, here is a $45,000, I'm going to call you, I'm going to tell you not to, not to uh, pay tomorrow, okay? Have a nice day, sir. He's going to want to know, why, who am I? Why did I call him? He's going to know if he's a giver, if somebody, he wants to know that. If he's still stuck in his life, thinking that uh, next time it's not going to happen, or he's not going to 
see value in people, then he's going to go on his life and he's going to do other mistakes. Because the philosophy here is relationship. The philosophy here is value for value. The philosophy here is that uh, a connection, a real connection with a person can, can, can be worth more than uh, uh, any business plan or strategy can define in some, sometimes. Okay, you never know, okay, how it's going to translate. It's very hard to find people who have their pure intentions, very hard to find people who are givers. And if you find a giver and a giver, no matter how strong that person is, it can be a billionaire, okay? You find a giver and a giver and you gave first and you didn't want for nothing. You might get slapped a lot of times. People are going to use you. I'm not going to say people are not going to use you. They're going to use you. But you're going to find that person that is going to come up back 20 or 100 times more than what you gave him just because you showed your value. That's what I'm trying to do here. I'm sitting, instead of going and buying properties myself, I'm trying to actually save people's uh, 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 money by telling them they made a mistake that I saw. And uh, that's what I'm going to do with this person who's paying $47,000, which is extremely ridiculous. And we're going to search, we're going to do a search afterwards. We're going to see that it's probably uh, a new bidder and it's probably somebody who don't know what they're doing and that's very frustrating for me as an investor to go and see people are bidding forty-seven thousand uh, dollars buying thin air like i want to be next to them right now and tell them hey let's find a better reason a better uh purpose for your forty-seven thousand dollar. i don't think the purpose right now is right let me help you not lose forty-seven thousand dollars and actually make money. And that's, it's sad. It's just sad. Okay, I bought I bought HOA lens and I actually I'm living in an HOA lens right now. And uh, I can even show you. Okay, so this in this video I'm gonna show you right now at uh, my my HOA lien, the one I bought, the one I rented and the one I actually am living in right now. So this is where I live. And this is how you buy an HOA lien, okay? We're gonna do the comparison here. So I bought this HOA lien here in 2014, in January 2000, in January 2014 for $27,000. But guess what? Let's let's let me tell you, let me tell you my case study, and I'll show you my case study. I bought this property for $27,000 HOA lien in January 2014 rented it for $3,000 a month this is a beautiful community here that I'm living here right on the ocean the ocean view uh, two bedrooms and this is the three buildings that's our community basically uh, it's called the beach club in Hallandale If you want to see pictures, you can see pictures. That's our pools. We have about nine of those, all kind of pools. And this is where I bought my lean. I'm living in, this, in the middle building here. Uh, this is more or less my view. This is more or less my view too. And that's the property I bought in 2014 and I still own it today uh, talking about six years later so they're still bidding on that just in case I'm going to show you my own case study here after we move to uh, the previous one so I bought this property for $27,000 when people were not crazy in 2014, 2012, 2010 and stuff buying so people were not even understanding what they're buying they were not just buying it people were not buying it at all uh, they understood that it's HOA don't touch it uh, but then it started my niche about buying HOA foreclosures and I bought this property before the lease pendants, of course. And the bank is now foreclosing, trying to get me out, but I'm still fighting them. But let's look at the, look, let's look, look at the numbers because I've already been here for six years. So the first four years, actually the first five years, I rented this property for $3,000. Okay, before I moved into, I had a tenant here. So I rented it for $3,000. So $3,000... 
multiple 12, multiple 5 years. I, t I made a gross of $180,000 in rent. That's what I made in five years renting this property. My expenses, only HOA. $125 a max taxes, not paying. I'm not paying the, the taxes, the bank is paying it. There is another mortgage on it when I'm fighting them. So my, my uh, HOA a month, it cost me to live here 11.25, I was renting it for five years, collecting $180,000 in gross rent, okay? Obviously recouping my investment by far. I moved to this property about two years ago, one year and a half ago, and my cost to live here is 11.25 a month. Why I'm not paying taxes? I can show you. The bank is paying my taxes every single fucking year. And I'm not paying my taxes. How many? How much money I save in taxes during the five or six years? I save about sixty or seventy thousand dollars. You see, reverse mortgage is paying it because there is a reverse mortgage to that property. Okay, they're still bidding. I'm just checking. Uh, but let's continue. So, eleven thousand dollar a year taxes. I'm not paying, and I'm living in this property. I'm the owner of this property. I own this property, and I'm not paying taxes. So. $11,000 taxes I'm not paying, I'm paying only HOA, I bought this property in uh, uh, $27,000 in uh, uh, 2014, I'm still living here, I collected $180,000, okay, based on $3,000 a month gross rent for the past five years, renting it out, creating equity, real equity, right? And now I'm living here by myself for 11.25. So even when I live here myself in my building and I'm paying 11.25, every month I'm saving almost uh, $2,500. The rent is about $3,700 today here. So I'm saving $2,500 every single month. So in a year, I'll be saving $30,000 every single year that I stay in this property. In my living expense, I'm gonna be saving $30,000. Great, huh? I don't have any emotions to this property. I don't, I don't, I don't even, you know, it's not, it's mine and it's not mine because I know I'm going to lose it. So if you even want to see where I live, I can show you right now, actually. I'm making a nice case study. So here you go. That's my bedroom here. And that's my dog, Lichi. She's sleeping, sweetheart. And my kitchen the two bedrooms and kind of a windy day today but here is my balcony basically the view a little bit messy today here it's a two bedroom apartment a nice bedroom, a nice ocean view from the bedroom as well. That's my walking gear. Make sure you're staying fit. You have a nice walking closet. A little bit messy right now. <laughs> but a really nice walking closet. And a nice shower, of course. Jacuzzi. I really have a lot of mess. Not the best time to show. I got my perfume that I like so much. <laughs> and this is the property I bought in 2014 as a lien. You have to have a strategy. You have to know exactly what you're going to be doing with that property. Who has his old money? Are you gonna rent it? Are you gonna live in it? Are you gonna sell it? What are you gonna do? You gotta ask yourself, what are you gonna do? All right, so that's my case study. That's how I bought my property. I bought 150 properties like this, 
since 2013 more or less or since 2012 i've rented them i fought the banks for it i've had over a hundred cases that we were litigating and still litigating and that's the way you create equity when you buy hra foreclosures you have to have a strategy and you have to have a way that can justify your investment uh, and recoup your investment very quickly all right so right now i'm jumping into that foreclosure cell again that it's been going on for a while uh, we are waiting for it to finish it's a bad sell there is an outstanding mortgage $175,000 right and we still right now we just deleted the other case here well I don't know why I did that but let's see if I can get it back no we deleted that case number but we know as a fact that there is a $175,000 owed against that property and only it's only worth $220,000 that's what we found out so buying this property is not a good idea and people should be avoiding doing that and i'm just gonna be waiting until this sale finishes and i'm gonna try to find that person and give them a call and let them know hey guys you have no idea what you're doing you have two options listen to me or as it looks right now lose fifty five thousand dollars